Hi. Um, thanks for coming to uh, see this talk about hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, I want to um, teach you guys six things about hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And uh, in going through these things, I uh, hope uh, to be able to convince you that uh, this is a real thing, it's a common thing, and uh, it's a, a disease that causes uh, a great deal of uh, suffering for these patients. And uh, it's a disease that we have a lot to learn about. Uh, and it's a disease uh, that uh, is responsible for a lot of utilization of uh, healthcare resources when looked at from a population uh, health um, uh, standpoint. And uh, the uh, six things I want to teach you are first that uh, things with Ellis Danlos syndrome are frustrating. Things snap, crackle, and pop. Things sag, things hurt all over, things don't work right, and things bleed, which is how I, a hematologist, got uh, involved in this disease. Um, hypermobile EDS is a disease which is common, but underrecognized. Uh, it appears to have autosomal dominant uh, genetic inheritance with incomplete penetrance, but we don't know the gene. Uh, the other forms of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome uh, correlate to mutations in the collagen genes, uh, but this disease um, uh, has never been found uh, to be associated with problems with the collagen genes themselves. I suspect that it is a, a gene which controls some process that modifies connective tissue after it's made, uh, perhaps a gene which uh, uh, involves a reabsorption of connective tissue, uh, but that uh, is still unknown. Uh, because we don't have any uh, uh, gene identified, we still don't know uh, the uh, molecular pathogenesis of the disease, and we don't have any blood test, biopsy, or scan uh, to diagnose it. The, the diagnosis is made uh, purely clinically, and uh, the details of uh, the diagnosis uh, Dr. Stevens covered in his uh, talk. Uh, maddeningly, these patients often look fine, uh, as long as you don't look at their joint mobility, but they have really severe symptoms. Uh, they also have a fair amount of anxiety and depression, and uh, that anxiety and depression is probably a, a physiological manifestation of uh, their postural orthostasis tachycardia uh, biology, which I'll talk about later in, in the talk, but uh, this gives a heightened uh, 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 sense of um, uh, uh, desperation uh, that these patients have, and, and uh, they do feel often very uh, 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 frustrating uh, to the clinician. Uh, there's no specific treatment for this. Uh, there is a complete lack of controlled trials uh, in hypermobile Ellis Danlos syndrome, and uh, even from the point of view of a hematologist oncologist, there's not even a standard endpoint. Uh, for how you would design a clinical trial in hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So we, we have a long way to go with this disease. Um, and uh, one of the things uh, that uh, uh, the uh, patients uh, uh, find frustrating uh, is that it's very under-recognized. Uh, certainly hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome was not a disease that I was taught in medical school. Uh, and uh, uh, as uh, D.H. Lawrence uh, said in Lady Chatterley's Lover, what the eye doesn't see and the mind doesn't know doesn't exist. And uh, these uh, patients uh, search long and hard uh, to find their diagnosis. And uh, the uh, uh, 
there is uh, uh, a relief uh, when you uh, give them their uh, uh, um, diagnosis uh, that finally they're uh, believed. Uh, and uh, the other forms of um, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome tend to be uh, very um, rare diseases, uh, but uh, it appears that hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is not rare. Um, this is an analysis that was done by uh, Dr. Nielsen, uh, who uh, ran the connective tissue uh, clinic uh, at Children's Hospital that diagnosed uh, uh, many uh, children in the Cincinnati area with uh, hypermobile EDS, and also uh, until several years ago, they took care of adults, but they're no longer doing that. And uh, uh, they, um, uh, previous estimates were that this was uh, one in uh, 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 10,000 to one in 15,000 patients, but more recent estimates suggest that it's uh, uh, up to 2% of the population, and uh, uh, which is it? And uh, they looked at uh, the patients that they had um, uh, uh, accrued uh, in a several year period, and they saw 2,218 patients, uh, and uh, uh, just in their clinic in Cincinnati. And if you adjust this for the entire population with, what, with the uh, assumption uh, that, that it's one in 10,000, uh, then they would have seen 10% of the people with hypermobile Ellis Danlos. Uh, but uh, uh, since almost all of their, um, uh, all of their um, uh, referrals were from locally, uh, their estimate is that it's uh, one in 500 uh, people. So that, that's uh, very uh, common. And uh, the um, lack of a uh, um, objective scan, x-ray, or biopsy uh, leads us to make uh, the diagnosis based upon uh, the clinical criteria. And we end up seeing a spectrum of people. On one end of the spectrum, uh, we have people who just are flexible and nothing is bothering them. Uh, those people we don't give uh, any diagnosis to. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, we have people who uh, fit uh, every one of the diagnostic criteria uh, that Dr. Stevens uh, talked about. And uh, uh, then in the middle, we have people who are having definite problems uh, and definite related problems, but don't have the breadth of the manifestations uh, for them to meet every uh, criteria uh, for the diagnosis. Um, and those people uh, we now term as having hypermobility spectrum disorder. Uh, not infrequently, we will uh, evaluate somebody this year and label them hypermobility spectrum disorder, uh, and then reevaluate them a couple of years later, and more things have happened, and now uh, they check uh, enough of the boxes for us to say they have hypermobile Ellis Danlos syndrome, and nothing has changed uh, about uh, the patient's biology. Uh, the only thing that's changed is uh, the word uh, that we use. Uh, to describe them. Uh, in the individual patient, it probably doesn't make that much of a difference, uh, though uh, for uh, uh, studying patients, uh, it is uh, uh, important uh, to do studies on patients who are well-defined and meet uh, all of the criteria for hypermobile Ellis danlos syndrome. Um, the um, uh, uh, um, relationship to uh, 
anxiety and panic disorders uh, in this group has been well uh, uh, described. And uh, this uh, study uh, done many years ago uh, looked at uh, patients with uh, hypermobility syndrome uh, compared to other patients uh, in a rheumatology clinic. Uh, and uh, the patients with uh, hypermobile syndromes uh, were 10 times more likely to have panic disorders or agoraphobia. Uh, the other phobia that they have is kinesophobia, that they're afraid of moving uh, because of all of the musculoskeletal problems and poor proprioception that they have. Um, conversely, uh, when uh, they've looked at groups of patients who have panic disorders, uh, a significantly more uh, 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 um, percentage of them uh, have hyper joint hypermobility compared uh, to patients who have other psychiatric uh, disorders. Uh, so it, it uh, uh, works both ways, and the anxiety that these patients bring uh, 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 to uh, the clinic uh, helps with the frustration. Uh, we kind of uh, see uh, several phases of the condition. Uh, in uh, childhood, uh, the uh, boys and girls are equally affected. We believe that this is autosomal dominant with uh, incomplete penetrance, and uh, uh, the males and the females are, are equally uh, affected. But in the teenage years, uh, the um, boys get better and the girls get worse. Uh, such that uh, when treating an adult population, I end up seeing uh, nine women to uh, every man uh, with this disease. And uh, we believe that this uh, is affected uh, by sex hormones, though so I'm not sure whether it's that female sex hormones make things worse or that uh, male sex hormones may uh, be protective. Uh, but uh, the uh, sex difference uh, is striking, uh, but uh, the girls do inherit this from their fathers uh, just as easily as from their mothers. All right. So uh, now I'm going to uh, go through some of the uh, clinical manifestations uh, of uh, the uh, hypermobile Ehlers Danlos uh, syndrome. And what I'm hoping uh, by uh, going through this uh, is uh, to uh, help you uh, uh, be aware of the pattern of problems that these patients have uh, and uh, uh, with knowing and recognizing the pattern, uh, being able uh, to know uh, which of your patients may have this. And uh, these are, are the common uh, 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 problems that uh, the patients come uh, to my uh, clinic with. Uh, and uh, the first thing is uh, the orthopedic issues. Uh, things snap, crackle, and pop. Uh, they, they have unstable joints. Uh, so they, they dislocate their shoulders. They uh, have hypermobile uh, knees. Uh, they uh, uh, sublux uh, their uh, patella. Uh, they uh, have uh, fingers at uh, sublux, and they end up having to wear uh, braces. Um, they have poor proprioception, uh, and uh, uh, this has been uh, well uh, defined in a number of uh, different. Uh, studies and a meta-analysis uh, showed that uh, patients with hypermobility syndrome uh, have uh, a worse uh, joint position sense and uh, worse a sense in detection uh, to movement uh, than controls. And uh, one of the questions uh, I always ask these patients when I'm uh, seeing a new patient is, uh, as a child, were you clumsy? And uh, it is amazing uh, how often I get this exact answer back uh, 
I still am. Uh, and uh, the reason we think that they have uh, 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 a poor proprioception is uh, that uh, the nervous system uh, lets us know uh, position sense through proprioceptors, which are uh, nerve endings that wrap around the connective tissue and uh, sense the tension on the connective tissue. And if the connective tissue is too loose or stretchy, the nervous system gets confused and doesn't know where your uh, 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 joints and muscles are. And so these people fall, they break things, they knock into doors. In addition to uh, having uh, joint dislocations and subluxations, they also have frail collagen. And so they end up having uh, issues with uh, torn uh, ligaments and tendons, like a, an Achilles tendon. They uh, rupture meniscuses. Uh, they um, uh, rupture ACLs. Uh, one of the common presentations uh, will see uh, it is a uh, uh, young woman uh, whose uh, first manifestation of hypermobile level stand loss uh, was an ACL tear, an ACL tear playing um, uh, high school soccer. Uh, they uh, uh, have uh, hip labrum uh, tears. Um, they uh, seem to have a higher uh, uh, percentage of uh, uh, symptomatic disruptor and degenerative disease of the spine compared to the general population. Uh, they also uh, get a sacroiliac uh, uh, joint dysfunction, so a lot of low back pain, a lot of hip pain. Uh, one of the things just to uh, mention uh, uh, for the um, primary care physician uh, is uh, that uh, fluoroquinolones are uh, relatively contraindicated in uh, patients with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Uh, that the fluoroquinolones uh, are associated with an increased uh, amount of uh, uh, tendon ruptures. And uh, recently the FDA warned about uh, the increased risk of um, aortic uh, blood vessel rupture in patients treated with fluoroquinolones, but this is probably more important uh, to other forms of ehlers danlos syndrome. But generally you should avoid the fluoroquinolones in patients with EDS. All right. uh, another set of problems uh, that these patients have is that things sag. Right? That, that their, con their connective tissue is loose and gravity uh, is not their friend. And um, there's a very close uh, relationship uh, between uh, uh, hypermobile Ehlers Danlos syndrome and uh, the Arnold Chiari formation type 1 with uh, uh, um, the uh, descent of the cerebellum, cerebellar tonsils uh, through the foramen magnum, uh, causing uh, disruption of cerebrospinal fluid, uh, headaches, and uh, uh, a number of protean uh, different uh, uh, neurological manifestations. Uh, we also see the thoracic outlet uh, uh, syndrome, which is sometimes caused by a, a cervical rib, but in Ellis Danilo's uh, patients is uh, uh, caused by uh, dynamic uh, sagging of the uh, uh, ligaments uh, uh, in the thoracic outlet, uh, compressing uh, both uh, the uh, vessels and uh, the nerves, uh, giving neurological symptoms in the ipsilateral arm, uh, but also predisposing them uh, to axillary vein uh, thrombosis. Uh, patients will have drooping of their uh, eyelids and uh, will uh, uh, need uh, uh, from time to time uh, a peripheral plasty uh, to uh, uh, correct uh, the ptosis. Uh, 
Um, this is also seen in other forms of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, including the classical form. Um, uh, a couple of other uh, issues that we see are uh, the mediate arcuate ligament syndrome, where, the, uh, where uh, in the uh, abdomen, uh, the celiac axis uh, artery uh, is uh, uh, compressed by the mediate arcuate uh, ligament uh, because the ligament is sagging, uh, causing pressure on the artery and also pressure on the celiac um, axis nerves, uh, causing postprandial pain uh, and uh, abdominal pain uh, that uh, uh, is positional. Uh, we see the piriformis sinus muscle uh, uh, syndrome, where the piriformis uh, muscle sags and uh, 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 compresses on the uh, sciatic nerve. And uh, the, um, uh, uh, one of the um, uh, big problems uh, that our gynecologists see uh, in these patients is uh, pelvic floor dysfunction with rectocele, cystocele, uh, uh, uterine pleurolapse, and chronic uh, pelvic uh, pain. Uh, probably the most difficult of the uh, issues where things sag uh, is the a problem of craniocervical instability uh, where the uh, ligaments uh, uh, and connective tissue uh, in the high cervical spine uh, lead to instability be uh, between uh, the vertebrae and the base of the skull. Uh, and uh, this is associated with uh, chronic uh, uh, cervical pain and occipital headaches, but can also be associated uh, with uh, neurological dysfunction uh, from compression of the spinal cord. Uh, and uh, this often ends up with uh, very complex uh, spine fusions uh, and uh, the uh, other problem we see with the spine fusions is uh, once several levels are fused, uh, we end up starting to see hypermobility in the adjacent um, uh, levels. Uh, so the combination of uh, things snap cracking, crackling and popping and things sagging uh, ends up with uh, uh, a lot of pain. Things hurt with this disease. And uh, we end up seeing uh, three types of pain uh, in Ellis Danlos syndrome. Uh, the first is the acute pain, uh, which is I just ruptured something, or I just dislocated something. Uh, the uh, second type of uh, pain we generally see uh, is a chronic microtoma to the joints from bad joint mechanics. And what happens is with um, the combination of poor proprioception uh, plus uh, the joint laxity from the ligament and tendon uh, uh, laxity uh, leads the patient uh, to misuse uh, their joints and the misuse of their joints leads uh, to chronic damage to the joints and this leads to chronic joint pain and premature osteoarthritis. Uh, the uh, uh, third type of pain is a diffuse fibromyalgia-like pain syndrome. Uh, about half the patients that I see and diagnose as adults had been previously diagnosed by somebody else as having fibromyalgia. Uh, and the uh, presentation of this uh, 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 pain uh, is uh, very, very uh, close to uh, classical fibromyalgia, and we essentially treat it the same way. Conversely, when you look at groups of patients who have been diagnosed as having fibromyalgia, uh, the um, uh, half of them are hypermobile, uh, and so the overlap is uh, probably real. 
and probably biological. And uh, since we don't understand uh, the pathogenesis of either disease yet, uh, that is probably one of um, the Rosetta Stones for understanding both diseases. Uh, and uh, when, we, when we look at um, the uh, prevalence of uh, patients having pain uh, with uh, ehlers Danlos Syndrome, uh, uh, hypermobile type, it is um, uh, very, very high. Uh, this is from a, a review of the literature from a couple of years ago, uh, and uh, uh, they uh, looked at uh, quite a number of studies, and uh, uh, 90 to 100% of patients diagnosed with ehlers danlos Syndrome in the literature uh, had uh, generalized pain. Uh, uh, Ninety percent of them have uh, temporomandibular joint pain. Uh, headaches are incredibly common, uh, and uh, musculoskeletal uh, pain of um, many different sorts uh, are common. Uh, the uh, um, uh, not only uh, is the pain common, uh, but the pain is also uh, uh, debilitating and uh, very impactful on quality of life. Uh, in uh, uh, this uh, study in arthritis and rheumatism, uh, they compared uh, the uh, impact of pain uh, uh, in ehlers danlos Syndrome patients to those with uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and the amount of pain and uh, the amount of uh, debility and quality of life impairment was greater in ehlers danlos Syndrome uh, than in rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, one of the things that uh, has recently gotten attention uh, in uh, uh, hypermobile ehlers danlos Syndrome is uh, the incidence of small fiber neuropathy. Uh, which is degenerative disease of the small uh, uh, pain uh, sensing fibers. Uh, and a small fiber neuropathy is not uh, well seen on EMGs. Uh, and uh, the uh, way the diagnosis is made is by doing a skin biopsy and looking uh, for the density of the uh, uh, small fibers uh, microscopically. And in small fiber neuropathy, the uh, density is significantly decreased. And uh, uh, this uh, study from 2018 uh, looked at uh, 20 patients with uh, 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 hypermobile EDS uh, and uh, uh, then uh, they found decreased uh, pain density, uh, decreased small uh, fiber uh, uh, density uh, uh, in all uh, 20 of them. Uh, and this is uh, certainly something that needs uh, um, greater study. Uh, the um, uh, treatment of pain uh, in ehlers danlos Syndrome, probably in, uh, the most uh, uh, effective thing we can do for them is to give them good physical therapy by somebody who knows uh, ehlers danlos Syndrome and is looking at them for ehlers danlos Syndrome, uh, looking at how they move their entire body through space and time. We uh, concentrate on building core strength in the patients. Uh, uh, the pharmacological treatment is NSAIDs, uh, is the uh, mainstay. Uh, many patients, we end up switching to Celebrex because of GI toxicity uh, from the NSAIDs. Uh, the fibromyalgia pain, uh, the most effective uh, thing uh, is uh, probably duloxetine. Uh, we'll also use gabapentin and Lyrica. Uh, uh, some patients will uh, get benefit out of uh, chiropractors and acupuncture. I try to avoid narcotics as much as possible in these patients, um, 
the narcotics are not very effective for this type of pain. Uh, the uh, risks of addiction and overuse and sedation. And most importantly, the uh, uh, GI toxicity of narcotics. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the GI problems in a moment, but um, uh, GI toxicity from narcotics, particularly severe constipation and nausea and vomiting, is a tremendous problem. Uh, though at the end of the day, uh, often uh, our pain uh, uh, is inadequately relieved uh, in Ellis Danilo syndrome. Uh, the next uh, set of things I wanted to talk about were uh, things don't work. And th this is a um, uh, uh, triad of uh, uh, the associated disorders. And the associated disorders are not part of the uh, diagnostic uh, criteria for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, but they are very common. Uh, and uh, are often the most difficult problems to deal with. The, um, uh, the um, first of them is postural orthostasis tachycardia, uh, the second is GI functional disorders, and the third is mast cell activation. And um, these three things often run together in a pack. Uh, uh, they wax and wane uh, together. Each one of these things can be seen in patients apart from hypermobile Ellis Danlos syndrome. Uh, but in hypermobile Ellis Danlos syndrome, there's probably some underlying uh, pathophysiology to bring all three. Uh, and this is a uh, quick review um, that I put together of uh, the manifestations. Uh, that I've seen in uh, uh, the last three months of uh, new patients uh, that are diagnosed with hypermobile Ellis Danlos syndrome. And uh, uh, these represent about 60% uh, of the patients that I've evaluated for hypermobile EDS, and the ones who didn't meet all the criteria were excluded from this analysis. Uh, and so uh, all of these patients uh, met the EDS Society criteria, uh, and uh, uh, on all of these patients I do a structured history and exam uh, to make the diagnosis. And uh, of these patients, 87% had symptoms uh, uh, which uh, were consistent with postural orthostasis tachycardia. 58% uh, of them had a history of panic attacks. Uh, uh, an interesting um, thing that we see in hypermobile Ellis Danlos syndrome is many of them note anesthetic inefficacy, that when they go to the dentist, the Novocaine doesn't work. Um, and actually, a lot of them develop dental phobia because of it. 42% uh, of, of these patients had a previous diagnosis of fibromyalgia. 51% of them had mast cell activation-like symptoms. 65% uh, of them had irritable bowel syndrome diagnosis uh, prior or had uh, symptoms consistent with irritable bowel syndrome. 48% had chronic constipation. 74% had GERD. 13% had gastroparesis. And I, I would say uh, probably the most um, serious and difficult um, problem we run into in hypermobile Ellis Danlos syndrome is when patients develop severe gastroparesis. Right. The, the postural orthostasis tachycardia syndrome is a constellation of symptoms uh, where uh, when going from sitting to standing or, or standing uh, up, uh, the patients uh, become lightheaded, they feel like they're going to faint, they become tachycardic, uh, they have palpitations, they feel anxious, uh, they can have chest pain, they feel dizzy. Uh, it often happens when they're exposed to the heat, and particularly a hot shower brings it on. Uh, and uh, uh, they uh, will often end up 
complaining of a brain fog uh, as this becomes chronic, that they, they can't concentrate. And uh, what we think is going on with hypermobile Ellis Danlos syndrome and uh, this uh, array of symptoms is that these patients are having, number one, difficulty knowing what their blood pressure is. The way we know what our blood pressure is, is we have baroreceptors, which are similar to uh, uh, proprioceptors, which are nerve endings that wrap around the connective tissue in our main arteries and sense this uh, tension on uh, the main arteries being uh, uh, correlated to the blood pressure. But if the connective tissue is too loose or stretchy, uh, the autonomic nervous system becomes confused and doesn't know what your blood pressure is, and it thinks you're in shock. And when it thinks you're in shock, you have a flight or fight reaction uh, with a uh, 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 anxiety, tachycardia, palpitation. Uh, the uh, second uh, uh, feature to this is that uh, patients uh, uh, will have dilatation of their veins, which are much more distensible than uh, uh, the arteries, and uh, when they stand up, and the veins balloon up, and blood volume shifts from the arteries uh, to the veins, and patients are not getting enough blood flow to the brain. Uh, it's much more common that the patients feel like they're going to faint uh, than they actually do faint. Uh, the, um, uh, uh, objective testing uh, for this, uh, almost all of these patients have normal echocardiograms. Uh, most of the time uh, you will see just sinus tachycardia on Holter monitors. Uh, and uh, uh, the objective testing has been tilt table testing, uh, but uh, tilt table testing uh, may be specific for POTS, but in this population is not always sensitive. And uh, we do come across many patients who have uh, this uh, entire clinical um, spectrum without having diagnostic tilt table. Uh, the, um, uh, management of uh, the POTS, the most um, uh, important things are um, to uh, avoid things that make it worse, uh, like uh, sudden changes in uh, posture, uh, uh, prolonged recumbency, uh, in, in uh, exposure to heat, alcohol, uh, large meals. Uh, the maintenance of intravascular volume, uh, and I tell the patients to drink uh, 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 over 100 uh, ounces of uh, uh, fluid a day, uh, plus the equivalent of an extra teaspoon of salt, either added to the diet or uh, uh, with uh, um, commercial salt uh, supplements like um, salt stick or liquid IV. Uh, we uh, have them wear compression hose. Uh, one of the uh, things uh, that helps the most is uh, uh, aerobic exercise. Uh, and if they are willing to do 30 minutes of aerobic exercise five days a week, their heart remodels and it helps uh, solve the blood pressure problem by increasing the squeeze on the heart rather than increasing the rate on the heart. So there are lots of uh, types of aerobic exercise they don't tolerate. Uh, they don't do very well if you try and put them on a treadmill, but they do do well with swimming or a recumbent bike or water aerobics. Um, pharmacological treatment of POTS, uh, acutely uh, intravenous fluid uh, helps the acute attack. And some patients with severe disease uh, and who are debilitated by their POTS get ongoing IV uh, uh, fluid. Uh, fludrocortisone helps people retain uh, the salt, uh, though many uh, won't tolerate it. Uh, Mitodrin keeps the blood pressure up, though one has to watch for recumbent hypertension. Uh, 
uh, for uh, uh, lowering the heart rate. Uh, some patients do well with prosopolol. Uh, one of the um, other drugs which is uh, uh, quite useful is Colinor, uh, which slows the heart rate down without lowering the blood pressure. Uh, it, but the problem with Colinor is it's expensive and this use is off-label, so many insurances will deny it. Uh, patients uh, uh, will often benefit from being on an SSRI or an SNRI uh, as their serotonin uh, levels are low with POPs. Uh, and sometimes periodostigmine uh, is used, uh, though many patients can't tolerate the periodostigmine because of the GI side effects. Uh, GI side effect, GI um, uh, manifestations of uh, uh, EDS are common, uh, and uh, most of the time what we see is poor goat, gut motility. Uh, things don't move in the correct uh, uh, direction. Uh, they have GERD, they have gastroparesis, they have chronic constipation, they have irritable bowel syndrome. Most of the time, uh, their endoscopies and colonoscopies uh, will be uh, unremarkable and non-diagnostic. Uh, we'll sometimes see eosinophilic esophagitis, uh, we uh, will often see, if we look for it, mast cell infiltration. Uh, the um, uh, the uh, prevalence uh, of uh, um, GI symptoms and GI diagnoses is quite high, and there is a close correlation uh, with uh, uh, the uh, GI functional uh, disorders and dysmotility uh, with uh, postural orthostasis tachycardia. Uh, one way to think about it, which is probably an oversimplification, but uh, one way we think about it is that with postural orthostasis tachycardia, uh, the uh, fight or fight part of the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetics, is chronically overstimulated and this uh, uh, suppresses the rest and digest, the parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for gut motility. The treatment of GI symptoms, antacids, uh, protonics, constipation, lunsus, motegrity, miralax, cramping, dental, elimination diets, and uh, uh, frequently, uh, uh, I will see uh, patients who have been on a gluten-free diet uh, and uh, had significant improvement uh, in their symptoms on a gluten-free diet in absence of having celiac disease. Um, and and uh, that's a common and striking finding that I, I, I see. Uh, they have chronic nausea, uh, and uh, one of the things that can help the GI symptoms is the treatment of mast cell activation syndrome. And uh, mast cell activation syndrome uh, it is uh, a, uh, uh, also a frustrating and uh, difficult uh, uh, syndrome in and of itself. So, uh, you know, the usual pathogenesis of uh, allergic reactions are that uh, mast cells uh, are activated by the binding of IgE antibodies uh, conjugated to uh, whatever the allergen is, and histamine and leukotrienes are released and activated. But uh, there is uh, something uh, going on in hypermobile ehlers danlos syndrome uh, where the mast cells are activated and uh, release their mediators uh, without interacting with an allergen or IgE. Uh, the grenades are going off by themselves without having the pins pulled. And uh, mast cell activation uh, causes uh, episodes of diffuse flushing. Uh, it uh, uh, causes uh, the uh, uh, vasomotor uh, issues going on uh, with the hand. Uh, it causes urticaria and graphic urticaria. Uh, 
and angioedema. Uh, other um, uh, uh, um, manifestations can include hypotension, uh, uh, anaphylactic reactions after uh, stings, uh, uh, um, anaphylaxis after exposure to um, uh, anesthesia, uh, chronic rhinitis, pruritus, uh, and there is overlap of the mast cell uh, uh, symptoms with uh, the GI symptoms uh, uh, from the functional um, uh, dysmotility. And uh, they also have a tendency towards asthma, uh, chronic uh, wheezing, uh, throat swelling, and we do see patients with vocal cord uh, uh, dysfunction. Uh, the um, objective uh, diagnosis of mast cell activation uh, is really a difficult subject, um, and it's not standardized. Uh, when people have mast cell um, uh, uh, malignancies, like systemic mastocytosis, their tryptase levels are uh, always uh, uh, elevated. Sometimes in mast cell activation, after an attack of mast cell activation, uh, patients will have transient uh, uh, um, elevation of uh, their tryptase, uh, but uh, most of the time uh, we don't make that diagnosis. Uh, uh, that finding is quite insensitive. Uh, some people have noted increased histamine levels in the urine or prostaglandin levels, or chromogranin levels, but again, uh, these are very insensitive. Uh, probably the most useful uh, 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 finding uh, to lead us uh, to a diagnosis of mast cell uh, activation uh, be on the uh, presence of uh, the symptoms and the uh, response uh, to anti-mast cell treatment is uh, uh, finding uh, increased amounts of mast cells in uh, 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 gastric, duodenal, and colonic biopsies. And uh, if well, we're seeing uh, significantly greater than 20 mast cells per high-powered field uh, on the biopsies, that uh, uh, is supportive of a diagnosis of mast cell activation. Uh, the um, treatments that we use for the symptoms of mast cell activation in these patients are um, uh, antihistamines, both H1 and H2 blockers, so usually I'll use uh, Zyrtec and Pepsid these days. Um, I'll often use Singular if the antihistamines are not enough. Uh, in uh, patients who um, need more than those three things, we'll add caramel and sodium. Uh, particularly if they're having a lot of GI symptoms. And with more uh, severe um, uh, uh, disease, we will send them to uh, analogous for omelizumab. Uh, the uh, um, mast cell activation uh, crises can be uh, provoked in some patients with alcohol, heat, uh, contrast, bee stings, or uh, exercise uh, and uh, invasive uh, procedures. Uh, and uh, the, um, uh, uh, in uh, the patients with Ellis Danlos syndrome uh, who are um, uh, fairly typical uh, hypermobile EDS patients, uh, we uh, uh, almost, we don't find um, uh, evidence for systemic mastocytosis or malignancy of uh, the mast cells. And uh, uh, it, it is really something that is a clinical diagnosis um, uh, uh, along with the rest of the mosaic uh, of this uh, uh, patient group. Uh, the um, last set of the manifestations I just wanted to uh, talk about uh, is the uh, bleeding problems uh, that we see with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos. Uh, 
And uh, this is actually how I got involved in uh, uh, this uh, disease. Uh, is uh, for many years I had run the hemophilia center in Syracuse and would be referred uh, uh, patients uh, who were having uh, bruising and menorrhagia, but all their blood work was normal. And uh, the, uh, they didn't have uh, uh, hemophilia, they didn't have von Willebrand's disease. Uh, what did they have? And uh, a, a high percentage of uh, these girls ended up having um, uh, hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos uh, syndrome. And uh, uh, so uh, when uh, people have looked systemically at uh, patients with EDS, 41% uh, of them have abnormal bleeding scores. Abnormal bleeding, bleeding scores are what the International Society for Thrombosis and Hemostasis uses as a way to quant quantitate uh, bleeding um, symptoms. Uh, and uh, coags and uh, von Willebrand's factors and platelet counts were not responsible. Uh, but uh, a, a platelet function abnormality uh, was uh, found in a large percentage of them with the abnormal bleeding score. Uh, and uh, the platelets don't stick uh, to the collagen the way they're supposed to. And uh, uh, one theory is that it's because the collagen is abnormal. Um, another finding, though, is uh, that uh, they uh, uh, appear to have storage pool deficiency. And uh, platelets have granules, that they have two types of granules, the gray granules and the dense granules. And the dense granules uh, contain ADP and serotonin. And the dense granules are, uh, um, are deficient in a, a significant percentage of patients with um, uh, hypermobile ehlers danlos syndrome. And they're also uh, deficient in uh, patients with uh, uh, postural orthostasis tachycardia syndrome. Th this is a series of patients uh, that Dr. Grubb, uh, who specializes in POTS up in Toledo, uh, recently published and found that 81% uh, of his POTS patients um, had uh, uh, storage pool deficiency uh, with decreased dense granules. They also had decreased serotonin levels from their platelets. And uh, uh, um, that 70% uh, uh, of uh, the patients in this group had joint hypermobility. Uh, and so storage pool deficiency uh, may be a Rosetta Stone uh, for uh, trying to understand uh, the uh, pathogenesis. Uh, the uh, uh, converse is that um, when uh, you look at groups of uh, young uh, women who uh, have uh, menorrhagia, 7% uh, of them uh, um, have, uh, as their cause, hypermobile Aldous Danlos uh, syndrome. And uh, this is a series from uh, uh, Children's uh, in Columbus. Uh, the uh, treatment of uh, the bleeding uh, for the storage pool uh, deficiency is uh, DDAVP uh, is uh, uh, the safest and uh, most economical treatment. Uh, we'll often use Lysteta, tranexamic acid, uh, uh, both uh, to, after surgery and uh, for uh, uh, menorrhagia. The girls with menorrhagia will often be treated with oral contraceptives or marina IUDs. Uh, one of the things we frequently run into is because they are having um, uh, menorrhagia, they often get iron deficient. Uh, because of their um, GI uh, dysfunction, uh, they don't tolerate oral iron. Uh, and uh, the uh, loss of uh, blood volume uh, 
associated with the iron deficiency anemia exacerbates their postural orthostasis tachycardia. So um, uh, these patients uh, will often be uh, miserable when they're iron deficient and intravenous iron uh, to treat their uh, 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 iron deficiency uh, it, it is often um, uh, very helpful. Uh, one uh, last uh, little um, uh, interesting mosaicism was, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, a high percentage of these uh, patients uh, uh, have uh, resistance to uh, local anesthetics. And uh, uh, um, in uh, uh, this particular study uh, from 2019, uh, uh, almost 90% of uh, patients with um, uh, Aldous Danlos syndrome uh, were resistant uh, to uh, local anesthetics. And um, not only was this been uh, reported symptomatically, uh, but uh, it's also been diagnosed uh, uh, um, uh, using studies uh, uh, with uh, uh, response uh, to stimulation uh, after emla cream. And uh, so uh, why do they have that? Uh, we don't know, uh, but uh, figuring out why uh, they have it uh, may uh, help us understand uh, what the pathophysiology of the disease is. Uh, and um, uh, this uh, last uh, slide that I'm going to show uh, is uh, complete speculation on my part. Uh, and uh, uh, having uh, uh, done uh, this uh, clinic for the last four years, um, uh, my thoughts about what's going on is that uh, connective tissue uh, does more uh, than to keep our joints together. Now, certainly the orthopedic problems uh, that we see and uh, the labrum tears uh, and the um, uh, uh, the meniscus tears are uh, uh, directly from the um, uh, connective tissue. But what about these associated disorders? How do how do they fit in? And so uh, the other um, uh, um, function of connective tissue uh, is uh, it uh, keeps uh, the external world uh, separate from our internal milieu. Uh, and uh, where our internal milieu uh, uh, interacts the most uh, with the outside world is through our guts, because that, that's where we absorb things. Uh, but if the connective tissue uh, is uh, uh, um, too loose, uh, in, if it's abnormal, uh, one could theorize that uh, the uh, connective tissue lets molecules from the outside world penetrate in through our guts that would normally not gain access. Uh, and um, the presence of these outside molecules uh, uh, um, uh, would then activate the innate immune system, of which the mast cells are part of the innate immune system. Uh, I, I think that there's probably more to the mast cell uh, activation syndrome that we see in ehlers Danlos syndrome than just the mast cells. Uh, I believe that there, there are probably other uh, parts of the innate immune system participate in this, and that uh, this uh, uh, activation of the innate immune system uh, does cause tissue damage and particularly small fiber neuropathy leading to the fibromyalgia sort of pain syndrome but also leading to the autonomic uh, dysfunction uh, that leads to POTS and leads to uh, the GI uh, dysmotility and uh, uh, the um, uh, following uh, uh, the biological leads uh, that we have, 
uh, both uh, the uh, insensitivity to um, uh, anesthetics and the uh, uh, the storage pool uh, uh, disease uh, can help us uh, perhaps uh, uh, untangle uh, uh, this uh, bowl of spaghetti. Uh, and um, so uh, uh, I thank you for your uh, interest in this disease. I hope uh, that uh, I've uh, convinced you uh, that uh, there must be uh, something uh, real here. Uh, the, uh, you know, one thing that strikes me is uh, as I see and evaluate these patients, uh, their stories are, are very, very consistent. Uh, and uh, uh, it, uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, coupling it with the uh, um, hypermobile joints, uh, I, I think uh, uh, that uh, uh, this uh, needs uh, uh, to be explained, uh, needs uh, to be diagnosed, uh, needs to be understood, and uh, we need treatment for it. So, um, thanks very much.